Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Codemart TV. My name is Pavitra Codemart and this is a new episode on my series Decode Jargon Season 1. This is a series for beginners to understand some jargon or terms commonly used in the realm of uh, front-end programming or JavaScript. I hope you find this useful. In this episode, we'll talk about CLIs and their somewhat opposite GUIs. I see that these acronyms are usually used very frequently and without any preface. So I'd like this video to be that preface. An interface is a medium through which a user can interact with any tool or object. For example, the handle of a saucepan is an interface to deal with its possibly hot contents. The knobs of the stove are an interface that you use to regulate the amount of fire that you need that stove to produce. The physical interface to interact with the computer are your monitor, your keyboard, your mouse, etc. etc. And when it comes and when it comes to dealing with the digital programs and tools, they also require a virtual interface. This is where CLIs and GUIs come into play. CLI is an acronym for command line interface and GUI stands for graphical user interface. A command line interface is a way to interact with the computer program by typing in instructions one line at a time. It comes from a time when computers did not have graphical interfaces available at all and the computer mouse was not even existent. A computer could only be operated by providing it a sequence of text commands. In a graphical user interface, a user can issue commands by pointing and selecting options from different constructs like menus, buttons, links, etc. These are now ubiquitous and uh, are the primary way in which most people access their computing devices. However, the CLI is widely used by programmers and somewhat advanced PC users as a way to provide instructions to the computer. The command line interpreter provides an environment where CLIs can execute instructions. Every operating system usually supports at least one command line interpreter. Uh, for example, it's the command.exe in Windows and uh, the terminal on the Mac. The main advantage of using a CLI is that it needs a low amount of computing resources to carry out instructions. It therefore executes commands really, really fast. The CLI also typically lets you execute more powerful commands. In my opinion, a CLI places more trust on its users than GUIs do. If you find yourself running a sequence of command line instructions again and again, you can bundle them into a script and start executing that script. If you find that a particular command line instruction is verbose and long and you use it often, you can alias it to a shortcut that is specific to your computer. CLIs are also accessible by default because it's a text only medium and it can be read out aloud or uh, displayed on braille without any loss of visual detail. A GUI on the other hand requires a significant number of computing resources in terms of display and memory uh, to show the user various statuses and uh, uh, interface uh, mechanisms like buttons and uh, animations and such. GUIs also divide users based on uh, permission levels and tend to restrict them on what kind of instructions they can execute. And hence, they are not considered very powerful. GUIs are typically not built for automation of tasks, but if you know programming, you could perhaps automate GUI, but it's usually not worth it. GUIs tend to easily miss the target on accessibility as a lot of the emphasis is on the visual aspects of the interface. Turning the coin, CLIs are definitely not ideal for all purposes. For one, it's hard to decipher what a CLI is capable of doing uh, without, without reading extensive documentation or just, you know, a lot of trial and error. What commands are available, what options these commands take, uh, this can be a little confusing and intimidating for uh, people who are not familiar with the uh, terminal. Also, recovering from a wrongly typed CLI is not a position that you want to be in. At best, it can be annoying and at worst, it can be catastrophic. Completing complex uh, steps is unwieldy in a CLI 
And to add to that, uh, the terminal does not provide any visual respite to the user from the wall of text. GUIs, however, can lay down the big picture very clearly for the user to see. The user can explore all the available capabilities and then decide upon which course of action to take for them to complete their task. The creators of GUI usually provide a good amount of fallback and error uh, handling options uh, when users inevitably commit a mistake. Uh, even a simple undo is a, is a super awesome feature on GUIs. I think this reduces a lot of user anxiety and uh, empowers them to utilize the GUI to its full potential. Complex tasks like vi video editing, drawing, etc. are only possible through GUIs. In the front-end world, a lot of tools use CLIs to perform their functionality like Node, NPM, Yarn, Jest and a lot of others. It's a it's a weird dichotomy where frontenders being the creators of GUIs themselves do not use GUIs in their tooling. But I believe that all kinds of tools have their place in a developer's arsenal. It depends on the trade-offs that your personality is willing to accept. Uh, some tasks are better performed on a CLI. Uh, for example, a package installation. Uh, but some tasks like, uh, say, resolving merge conflicts is much better done on a GUI. So it's up to you to decide which one is better for you. I believe that the availability of a wide range of tool sets is important for different kinds of developers. Some may be more visual and some may be more textual. I hope this gives you a better idea of what people talk about when they mention CLIs and GUIs in their tweets or in conversations. Uh, that's it for this episode of Decode Jargon. Thanks for watching till the end and uh, I'll see you in the next one.